Olivier Roy, Jihad and Death, The Global Appeal of Islamic State In the book, Jihad and Death, The Global Appeal of Islamic State, Olivier Roy seeks to provide an understanding of the motives and mindset of Western-born terrorists. Roy explains how jihad, which originally had strict regulations and was rarely called for in history, has now transformed into a concept invoked by radical leaders embracing the idea of a perpetual, personal obligation. Focusing on the emergence and appeal of groups like Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State IS, the book explores how such organizations have shifted the purpose of jihad, resulting in an increasing number of Western-born terrorists joining their cause. You will be presented with insights into the psychology, behaviors, and beliefs of these radicals, as well as their true connection to Islam and the global suffering of Muslims. The Evolution of Jihad Jihad has been referred to as the sixth pillar of Islam and has had a military meaning since its inception. However, regulations have been put in place to impose limitations on jihad and to prevent violent escalations. Calls for jihad have been rare throughout Islamic history due to these restrictions. The idea of a global caliphate and global jihad emerged after the 1948 conflict between Israel and the Arab states. Current radical leaders have embraced a view of global jihad that portrays it as a perpetual, personal duty, deviating from the sacred texts and official exegesis. Emergence of the Islamic State The Islamic State emerged in 2003 in Iraq, first calling itself Al-Qaeda in Iraq, then changing its name to Islamic State in Iraq and Al-Sham and finally to Islamic State in 2014. The group's birth was triggered by the transfer of power from the Sunni to the Shia population in Iraq, which outraged the Sunni population. Between 2001 and 2015, Western-born radicals who committed attacks in Western countries claimed association with Al-Qaeda, but in 2015, Amdi Koulibaly claimed allegiance to the Islamic State when he held hostages at the hyper cashier market on the outskirts of Paris. Since 2014, the group has been focused on building a global caliphate. Al-Qaeda's Scattershot Strategy Al-Qaeda and ISIS want to inflict as much harm as possible on ordinary Westerners by carrying out small, random acts of violence using cars, knives, or planes. This scattershot approach is not aimed at specific groups, and its goal is to create fear and chaos. Some attribute this strategy to Al-Qaeda member Abu Musab al-Suri, but this is not entirely accurate since the strategy was adopted in 1998 when Al-Qaeda declared war on the Jews and Crusaders. The ultimate goal was to deter Western military intervention in Muslim countries. Roots of Modern Terrorism The book explores how modern terrorism started in Afghanistan with the jihadis, who later spread to their home countries or moved to other places like the US to carry out terror activities. These terrorists are mostly westernized, but they do not identify with the culture of their parents' countries of origin. The author argues that the modern-day narrative of heroism, violence and the vanguard of the Muslim Ummah motivates youths to join the Islamic State. These potential recruits are often radicalized through videos uploaded by IS which appeal to a generation raised on video games and reality TV. The author notes that terrorist organizations like Al-Qaeda and ISIS don't technically recruit Western-born terrorists as they seek out these groups themselves. The Complex World of Modern Western Terrorists Modern Western terrorists are not always who we imagine them to be. They lack a consistent psychological profile and are often well integrated into Western culture. They possess only basic knowledge of Islam and become radicalized after contact with other radicals or in prison. Dying for their cause is a part of their plan, and they believe it will grant them forgiveness and religious superiority over their parents. Do not judge a terrorist by their appearance. Modern Western terrorists are not always easily identifiable as psychopaths or radicals. They lack a consistent psychological profile, and the usual image of an oppressed person or devoted fundamentalist is not always the case. In fact, these Western-born terrorists are well integrated into Western culture, dressing in modern attire, frequenting dance clubs, smoking and drinking alcohol, listening to rap music, and watching violent movies. 
They first become radicals after contact with fellow radicals in prison while 50% have been involved in petty crime, mostly drug dealing. They possess only the most basic level of religious knowledge, and about 25% are new converts with no prior connection to Islam, while 60% are second-generation immigrants who reconvert. The appeal of the jihad for women, a paradox to the uninitiated, is actually based on a logic where activism and servitude go hand in hand. Western terrorists may declare allegiance to a global caliphate, but their connection to the world's Muslims is imaginary. They lack understanding of specific Muslim-focused conflicts occurring worldwide. Reconversion takes place outside of a religious organization in small groups of radicalized peers. Possessing a delusion of religious superiority, they believe dying for their cause will mean forgiveness and secure their parents' place in paradise. We must not underestimate the complexity of modern Western terrorists. Although they claim to fight for Islam, their connection to it is tenuous, and their appeal to an increasing number of youth calls for a more comprehensive analysis of the sociological and psychological factors that lead to radicalization. Jihadists and the Power of Brotherhood Radical jihadi groups are filled with brothers who believe their Islam is superior to that of their fathers. These young jihadists reject their father's Islam and believe in their own truths. They see themselves as superior and use terror to surpass their fathers. These radicals shun traditional values, including arranged marriages, and instead choose their own partners, forming a nuclear family unit of up to three children. This concept of families pursuing jihad together is championed by the Islamic State and points to how much Western jihadists and their wives are influenced by Western culture. The binding power of brotherhood brings these individuals together and fuels their pure revolt, even without a concern for a utopia. The Women Who Embrace Jihad Women from Western countries have been joining the jihadist movement since 2012, with most traveling to Syria. While these women don't fight on the front lines, they seem attracted to experiencing death vicariously through their husbands. Malika El Araud, a radical wife whose husband died killing the Mujahideen resistance leader, wrote a popular book about jihad, enticing others to join. Female recruits are often young converts who give birth before their husbands die in terrorist activities. Despite claims of brainwashing from parents, these women argue that it was their choice to support jihad. The Nihilistic Underpinnings of Modern Terrorism Modern terrorism is not about political ideology or aspirations for a better world. Terrorists today subscribe to a nihilistic worldview and see death as a shortcut to heaven. They use grand narratives and religious causes to legitimize their maladjustment and psychological issues. The Islamic State and Al-Qaeda provide a framework for prestige and superiority to suicidal misfits and psychopaths seeking meaning and validation. Olivier Roy's insights into the mindset and motives of Western-born terrorists help us understand that these individuals are motivated by a sense of nihilism and despondency rather than a genuine commitment to Islamic principles or the creation of a utopia. Jihad has transformed from a strictly regulated concept to one of personal duty and escapism for these individuals, who often have little understanding of the religion they claim to defend. Although the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda provide these radicals with a heroic narrative that legitimizes their maladjustment, they are in reality disconnected from the world's suffering Muslims and driven by individual obsessions, seeking prestige and a glorious demise. It is important to acknowledge these driving factors while trying to counteract homegrown terrorism and Islamist extremism, 